Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Danuja. I am the virtual host here at Wonderful, and I will be working here with Janine. Um, she will be presenting Creating Travel Wheels that will tell a story about a destination. So just a little bit about Janine. She is a travel content creator, blogger, and podcaster who loves off-the-beaten-path destinations, road trips, the outdoors, and bucket list adventures. She helps over 400,000 women each month travel more adventurously through her destination guides, podcast, product recommendations, and by giving helpful advice on doing things outside their comfort zone. Janine creates amazing reels with 1 million monthly impressions and helps other creatives do the same um, by creating quality reels that tell a story, give value, and stop the scroll. Anyone with consistency can see the uh, similar results. So if you'd like to connect with Janine, you can follow her on The Wild Explorer, either on Twitter or Instagram. And just some announcements for um, the month of October, you can connect with other wonderful women in your city. So make sure to use the directory to look at topics, the global hosting options and local meetups um, that are in your area. So um, if you wanna start a chapter in your city and you don't see it, um, you can go ahead to the chapters and see, and then you can um, also provide information on that interest as well. Some events that are coming up, um, there's gonna be a continuation on Reels. So there'll be a Travel Reels Mastermind on November 8th at 12 o'clock. There will be an Exploring the World Through Storytelling um, event as well on November 9th. And there will be a new member orientation on November 16th for those of you who are new. Uh, part of uh, Wonderful, what we do is a portion of your membership goes to a different travel organization each month. This month's beneficiary is Adventure Travel Conservation Fund. Make sure to visit them today at adventuretravelconservationfund.org and also follow them on Instagram as well. For every paid membership, wonderful, um, a wonderful scholarship goes to a woman in need. Uh, so feel free to share the love there and you can check more information on the Wonderful website. The application deadline for that is December 1st of uh, this year. All right, so we should all be connected through Facebook or Instagram on Wonderful Here. And I'm just going to now give it over to Janine. She's your featured presenter today. So go ahead, Janine, and welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm going to be presenting um, Creating Travel Reels, a tell story about a destination. Um, we'll go to the next slide. <laughs> I'm Janine, um, which you already heard. Um, so today we're gonna go over how to create travel, uh, how to create reels for Instagram um, that tell a story, give value, engage your audience. We're gonna talk about what makes a reel shareable and savable, um, and then some tips on how to edit your reels. Um, so yeah, excited, okay. So let's talk about shareable and savable content and what the heck does that mean? So on Instagram, you can scroll through a feed and you can like and comment, but of course, saves and shares are really important. It's kind of like a super like. This is something that kind of stays beyond just a, you know, just, just a like or just a comment. This is, you know, another form of engagement that your audience doesn't necessarily see. Um, or like, for example, brands or tourism boards that you may want to work with might not see, but this is something that you could share with them to let them know, hey, my content resonates with my audience. Um, I share valuable information and it's very shareable and savable. So shareable content is what I think like, think of just entertaining. Think of, um, for example, like a meme account, something that, you know, a silly behind the scenes, um, travel inspo. Think of like the girl on the Bali swing, um, you know, and you're sharing that clip with, you know, a friend that maybe you're, you're going to take that trip with. Um, so we're dropping in the chat an example of this. This is one of my 
a, a reel that I did that is very shareable. I, I don't consider it savable. It's just like a funny clip of a mountain goat um, with a funny audio that went along with it. Does this really give value? No, but it's it's funny and it's very shareable. And um, I did include um, some of my analytics here for each of those, um, each of the examples that we're gonna be sharing. Um, so this reel, as silly as it was, um, had over, what was it, 47,000 views. Um, again, just, you know, funny, shareable content. Now, savable content is more informational. Um, think of like a mini blog post. This is like, you know, a quick resource guys, quick, quick tips. Um, so an example of that is a reel that I did um, about must visit beaches in Lake Tahoe. So, um, this had a little over 15,000 views and it was saved over 500 times. Um, it's just like a quick guide and those links are being dropped in the chat. So I'll give you a few minutes or I'll give you a minute. I think these are really short clips. If you just want to see those examples of shareable versus savable content. Now, each of these content pieces, it, it doesn't mean that people, it's just savable or just shareable. Obviously, um, the Lake Tahoe Rail got a lot of shares as well, but it's more savable. It's just something that like, oh, I'm going to Lake Tahoe next month. I'm going to save this for later. Oh, I haven't heard of this beach. I'm going to save this and refer to it later. So I'm just going to, they're really quick. So, of course, you could have a reel that is both shareable and savable. Um, this is a reel about a waterfall in California, in Northern California, um, and it got over 60,000 views and over 1,000 shares and saves. This is, this is kind of the... The, the content pieces that you want to go for. You want something to be shareable and savable. It's, you know, just to get that extra engagement, um, give that extra value. So I'll get that's getting dropped in the chat. It's a very quick video. It's audio only. It's quick. It's to the point. Um, there isn't a lot of information in the actual video itself, but I do have like a quick guide in the in the captions, um, which I do with a lot of my posts, except maybe that mountain goat post. I don't think I had any any you know super valuable information in there, but that was like a quick you know fun post, and it's always like you know you want to experiment. Not every content piece has to be super shareable. It doesn't have to be super savable. It doesn't have to do both. We want to experiment. We want to you know see what, you know, what resonates with our audience. Um, so not everything has to, you know, combine both elements. All right, let's start talking about how to tell a story. All right, so we wanna share something fun and exciting about a destination. Um, for, so this could be like, I'm gonna share a hidden gem. Did you know about this place? So an example of this is like, did you know there's a free observation deck at Alley City Hall? No, okay, so I'm gonna share a little bit more. Like that's my, that's my story. That's my like headline, if you will. That's how I would kind of like start the reel, kind of like an engaging headline to kind of like reel people or hook people in. Um, another way we could tell a story is we want to share a tip. Maybe we are at, you know, a beautiful, a, a restaurant with a beautiful view in Greece. Um, and, you know, if, and your tip is, did you know you could put in a special request via email to sit at this particular table? Um, or, you know, go at sunset for the best view at X location. So we're, we're sharing a tip, we're telling the story. Um, 
I'm just looking at my notes and I'm losing myself. <laughs> All right. And then another um, way to tell a story is a quick guide. So um, some examples of this is like a, you know, three must visit places in Mendocino, um, Yellowstone National Park bucket list. And so we would kind of share share different um, share different video clips of you know each of those three must visit experiences. And then you know we either add our over our text overlay or um, do a voiceover or add more you know, context in the caption about each of those each of those um, experiences and the same for like Yellowstone bucket list and this could go for anything these are just examples it can be you know three you know three must visit cities in Spain um x temples to visit in Chiang Rai Thailand um so just some examples of how how we kind of want to tell a story. And um, if the idea here is to kind of create a topic or a headline. And then, you know, you, we tell the story around that. So we'll go on to the next slide. OK, this is where it kind of OK. All right, so more on how to tell a story. So. Um, we're going to drop another, we're going to drop video four in the chat. Um, this is the Fort Bragg rail bikes. So how, how we would tell a story is we want to start with engaging video. So engaging video clips and, um, we don't need the newest camera. We don't need the newest iPhone we just need quality, quality video and not just panning. I know it's so easy to like when we go somewhere, we pan and it's like a left to right, right? Or maybe, maybe you want to switch things up, you do it right to left. Um, we want to kind of think beyond that. Panning is okay for, for video footage, but think of like different angles because we don't want every clip to be like that, right? Um, so when we're thinking of capturing videos at a destination, just think of like different angles. You know, do we want an overview? Is there somewhere where we could stand a little bit further away to get more of a more of a broad visual, um, you know, wider angle shot? Um, is there something up close? Are we talking about food or, you know, maybe we want to capture um, your server in Morocco pouring the mint tea and getting an up close shot of that. Just kind of when you start start scrolling through Instagram, start scrolling through reels and what catches your eye? What stops the scroll for you? Is it, the, you know, a different camera angle? Is it you know, how they captured a certain thing. Um, and, you know, you could kind of think beyond this if, um, you know, maybe you do have a newer iPhone and you do more of that like cinematic, go to the cinematic setting. You know, we could do that as well um, for a little bit more advanced. Um, I capture footage. I capture a lot of my footage on, on my iPhone, but I also have a drone, I have a 360 camera, and that does add to the video, obviously, but you could do so much on your iPhone and whatever you're comfortable with right now, just practice, practice, um, you know, the different angles and, you know, capturing footage just beyond a normal pan or, you know, a normal still, you know, just staying still and, and capturing movement. Think of just other ways to, to capture that, those video clips. So we, we tell a story with the video itself, um, but also we could further tell the story with, and these are all, well, voiceover is optional. You don't have to do a voiceover. I, I love voiceover. It is a, a little bit more time consuming. Um, 
but it it literally tells the story. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pause for 30 seconds so you could watch that video clip. Um, I will be talking um, in the video, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet. So not only is there voiceover, there's also text overlay that supports that. Not everybody on Instagram, when they're scrolling through Reels, not everybody is going to um, be listening. So text overlay is really important. And it also, it's something like visual, right? Um, it kind of keeps your eye moving. So text overlay is really important to me. I add text overlay to almost all of my videos. There's probably like 97% of my videos um, have, have text overlay. Um, I rarely post anything without any text overlay. Um, so text overlay kind of, um, text overlay just further tells that story. It keeps the eye moving. It's also bullet points, right? So if you go back to like the Lake Tahoe, um, the Lake Tahoe reel that we shared, that, that had text overlay of each of those beaches, right? So it's just like a quick, like, okay, Chimney Beach, this is what it looks like. Um, Secret Beach or Secret Co. I don't even remember what the name of it was. This is what it looks like. It's quick. It's engaging. And then caption. Caption, so important. We'll talk a little bit more about captions, but um, there's so many ways that we could add value in our captions and, um, you know, further tell the story. Um, we had a question. Sorry, I does it seem like Instagram penalizes you t for too much voiceover lately? You know, um, this is a this is a great question because when I um, back in twenty when was it um, twenty twenty? I can't even remember twenty twenty one between twenty um, end of twenty twenty. To 2021 is when I had a lot of growth on Instagram and all of my reels had voiceover and it was, I was doing really well. I went from about like 6,000 um, followers to 20,000 over six months or so. Um, and I was doing purely voiceover. I think I rarely did any audio. Um, and I recently kind of switched over because I'm again, you have to test things out. The algorithm is always changing. We've got to, you know, go with the ebbs and flows of everything and, you know, kind of stay on top of things. I don't think Instagram necessarily penalizes you, but I do think that the shorter audios, uh, um, audio is like between like seven to uh, 11 seconds or so does really well. Um, so lately, a lot of my video has been um, with with trending audio. And that's, I mean, we could talk a little bit more about trending audio a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I don't think they penalize you. But I, I do think that, um, that it doesn't get pushed out to, to a broader audience. Now, I believe that voiceover and like, telling telling a story and you know I try to keep it a little bit concise I try to keep things under um you know about 20 seconds and I know that could be a little bit longer a lot of my older videos are my, maybe um you know pushing that but um keeping it short and concise but the voiceovers is very like it's nurturing content it's you know something that your your current following already enjoys it's it, you know they want to they want to know about a destination they obviously follow you for a reason and 
like the recommendations that you have. So I feel like voiceover just like, you know, it's, it's, it's a mini blog post in a sense. It's just like quick and concise information. Um, but again, you could, you don't have to do voiceover. You can do just audio and, you know, you could stick specifically to trending audio, um, trending audio that's kind of in the earlier stages, but we could talk more about that a little bit later. Um, yeah, and that is more or less how to tell a story. Well, let's talk about giving value. So why should your audience care? Like, or, you know, if you're, if you're more of a, if you're a travel blogger, you're not um, necessarily, you know, you're, you're on Instagram to maybe <clears throat> give more value to your travel blog or draw people into your travel, travel blog. Why would a tourism board want to work with you? Well, because you give value. You highlight a destination in a fun and unique way. Maybe your audience is backpackers and, um, you know, you tell, you, you give value because you are telling people how Croatia, for example, is perfect for backpackers. Your family blogger, how is Oahu perfect for families? Um, you give value by providing helpful tips. And I know some of these might be a little bit repetitive. Obviously, you want to be helpful. You want to be resourceful. So just, you know, you want to give value by providing people with, um, providing your audience with, with helpful tips. So, and also just like being, being honest and being blunt, you know, for example, so I have an example. Um, everyone says sunset is the best time to go here. Go at sunrise for a beautiful view and no crowds. So you're putting in like, you know, that's your helpful tip. That's what you observe firsthand and you're letting your audience know. Um, and then again, the create short list of resources, um, example, must visit restaurants in Thailand. And then you actually tag each of those restaurants, making it super easy for somebody to, you know, save it, go back and click on each of those restaurants, go to, go to those restaurants, Instagram pages. And, you know, it's just very quick and easy. And that's, that's an amazing resource. Um, Okay, we'll go on to the next slide. So let's talk a little bit of more about how to give value. So I mentioned mini blog post um, in a, actually, hold on, I will pause right here. I believe we had, we had two questions maybe come in. Let me pull up one of the questions. How would how would you use Reels as a travel in, a travel agency um, who sells trips, tours, and vacations? Oh my god! Um, yeah, so you you could sell you could pretty much sell trips on Reels. What what can they expect? Let let people know what they can expect and create these. You know, maybe you want to be a little bit more broad with your. Um, information because obviously you don't want someone to necessarily come in and just be like okay well she gave us the whole itinerary we could just do this on our own um also add some information on why why they should book with you right versus doing this themselves um you know add some add some information on um you know we book all these things, we make sure you have the best room, we, you know, whatever your kind of selling point is, but, you know, kind of have like an insider glimpse of what that vacation could look like what you offer. Um, I think there's a, a lot of ways to do that. But um, I think just, you know, making sure you have your also um, a, a CTA, and we're going to talk about CTAs call to actions on book this vacation, go to the link in bio. We want to make sure we constantly have those CTAs um, in each each of our reels, whether that's in the caption and or in the actual um, reel itself. And if you watch some of my reels, if, if you go to my Instagram, like after the presentation, um, you'll notice that in 
probably 80% of my videos, I will have a call to action in the video itself. And then I always have it in the, in the caption as well. All right, let's pull up. What time do you find is best to post your reels? Um, I know you're West Coast, but I'm wondering if reels perform better at different times and carousels. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. So um, I go into my analytics and I see when my audience is most active and it'll um, it'll tell you there's like these little bars and um, I believe between it starts peaking at 9 a.m. all the way until 6 p.m. for me. So I'm West Coast Pacific time. Um, I have a little bit more of a bump at noon and then it stays steady until about 6 p.m. So my goal is always to go around like the 10 to 11. So I kind of catch people um, as it already has started peaking and then it just goes up a little bit from there. So kind of just, I would go in and test it out. Look at, look at what, what your audience looks like. If it's similar to mine, start at that kind of earlier time, not the earliest, but start at that earlier time. Um, and actually, and make sure it makes sense for you, right? Like if you are, heading to work at that time, if you're busy, like, you know, work around that. But um, the key here is to be consistent with that time. It makes a huge difference. Um, if, you know, the 1030 to 1130 works for me, I'm going to keep doing that. And you'll notice a difference if all of a sudden you post a reel at 2pm. If you, you, you know, you're, you're staying within one time and then all of a sudden it's another time. So um, when you're testing out, be consistent. Start start with a time that you think will work and works for you. Do that for at least 30 days. You, you'll start kind of, you know, seeing like by week two, but give it a good 30 days because nothing like you can't really, you can't be certain. Um, if you're not seeing that that works, move it along, just see what, um, what works best for you. And yeah, be specific on like, okay, if you're posting reels within 10, 10 a.m., for example, I'm going to post reels at 10 a.m. And I do have carousels. So I'm going to start doing that at 3 p.m. You know, give yourself a little bit of a, of a gap as well. Um, and then just test that out individually. Treat that as like just an individual um, post Be because it is, it, it's a carousel versus a rail rails get pushed out very differently than, than, um, carousel post, or at least I think so. I could be totally wrong though. You never know with the algorithm, but you want to test it out and be consistent with it. Um, be, you know, go into analytics. Analytics are your friend. Go in there, make notes, you know, start, start a spreadsheet, I posted this reel, it was 11 seconds, trending audio, um, you know, just make notes and um, at 9 a.m., you know, um, Monday, Tuesday, I did this and just look back and, and see, be consistent with it. I know this sounds like a lot of work and it is, um, <laughs> but you want to be consistent because that's, that's where you'll, you know, really, you know, get to know what what's working and what's not. If you if you drop off, try to pick back up, but you know, being consistent is 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 what's really going to help. All right. We'll go I don't know if there was another question or we'll keep going. I like to do a quick video of my recent trip. Do I need to download an app to do it on or what can I use to edit and combine them? Um, I'm gonna talk about editing um, in like a few more slides. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll address that for sure. All right, so I'm gonna um, go back to, so how to give value. Um, I've talked about mini blog posts. So, 
I kind of treat my captions as mini blog posts. And I am a blogger. I've been blogging since 2016. That is when that's how I kind of started in my, you know, travel industry journey. Um, I was I was blogging and I was also on YouTube kind of. So I was creating video content, but it was long form content. I didn't start creating short form video content until 2020. Yeah, 2020 um, when Reels first came out and then I started going on to TikTok. So um, I have a very like, you know, travel blogger mind where I love blogging um, and I love giving this information, but how do I translate that? How do I, you know, keep something concise in this, you know, smaller caption? Um, so I, I think of things as like mini blog posts, right? So this is the caption that I have for the rail bikes. Um, I always kind of do, not always, a lot of the times I do just like a quick guide, any sort of like helpful information that I think somebody would find helpful and want to save, I put in there. Um, and I want to add in, you know, honest feedback. If there's, you know, something that this particular experience maybe didn't include in their website or something I wish I knew. Um, I think I have in here. You must arrive 15 minutes before your scheduled departure time. They're very strict about this. So I made sure to add that in because let me tell you, when I went to the rail bikes and I was there on time, there was a line. And because I had to wait in line, I wasn't within the 15 minutes. I wasn't anticipating a line. So I let my, I let the viewer know like, hey, they're very strict about this. This is something that you should know. So um, mini blog post, it just think of a regular blog post, but making it concise. Um, making it very specific to whatever you're sharing quick to the point. You don't have to overshare. Um, sometimes I have to edit things down um, because Instagram just won't let me put that many characters in, but um, you know, add something in. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be a paragraph. It doesn't even have to be a full sentence. You could talk about, again, I'm going to go back to that, um, you know, three rest or, you know, must visit restaurants in Bangkok. Um, you could just tag them. You don't have to say anything else. You could tag them and put like, you know, th you know, two money sign, three money sign, like treat it kind of like a, like a Yelp or something like that. Um, if you want to give like a little bit more value, but you don't want to be too wordy. Um, so that's kind of what I refer to as mini blog posts, um, provide information that can easily be used for a future visit. So just again, quick guide to the point. Um, and then, yeah, honest feedback. If if there's something that stood out that your viewers should know, let them know. They'll they'll appreciate it. Um, because, you know, you'll, you'll have comments that, oh, this sucks. Oh, you paid, you know, $500 for this. Like, people are going to say things. So um, giving honest feedback is just, it's, it's a disservice not to give the honest feedback. And we'll go on to the next slide. Engaging your audience engagement. Why is it important? Because we, you know, we want people to interact with our, with our context. So we want to, uh, our content. We want to pique their curiosity and include them in the conversation. So this is as simple as just asking questions. Um, a lot of my reels I end with, would you go? So simple, blah, 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 would you go? Whether that's voiceover or text overlay or in the caption. Um, you know, have you been here? If you're showing a restaurant, you're showing different things, what item would you order? Just include them. And CTAs, call to action, um, so important. Um, you could do so much here. This is, you know, follow at the Wild Explorer for more national park travel. Um, click my link in bio for the full Lake Tahoe guide on my blog. Um, let people know wh either where to find you, where to find more of you, where to, you know, get more information. You have a blog, draw them to your blog. 
if you already have that info, let's, let's get them, let's get them onto your blog. Let's draw traffic to your blog. If they're following you for Lake Tahoe content and you've posted five reels, let them know in each reel. I have the full guide on my blog. Um, we'll go on to the next slide. So I'm just going to quickly go over some, some tips and can we pull up that? We'll pull up that question if we can. Uh, okay, perfect. So let's keep that question up. Um, so think about your story. Think about the topic headline. So three things to do in Barcelona. What, you know, that's, that's what you want your reel to be about, right? Like we kind of want to think of these stories with a headline, with, you know, something that we could kind of start. So that's kind of like the text overlay hook that draws people in. Um, we want to kind of, we want to start creating a caption and more or less a script. It doesn't have to be full on. I know when I say script, that might sound like a full on. And that doesn't even mean just, you know, script voiceover. That could be the like text overlay script. Um, start jotting down some things. And this kind of just helps you put together the reel itself. So I'm going to use, okay. So Sadie, um, you want to do a quick video about your recent trip. Um, do I download the app to do it or so um, I like creating outside of the app. I usually create in InShot. I created InShot. Um, a lot of people use CapCut and um, Splice. CapCut is very popular. I've been creating in InShot for since the beginning of, of short form video content, like on TikTok and, and on Instagram. So I'm very used to InShot. CapCut is, has a, way more features. I just, um, I'm so used to InShot that I don't even like really mess around with CapCut too much, but just depending on your, you know, comfort level, I recommend CapCut and InShot. Go in, play around with it, see which one you like more. And so what I would do is upload all of those video clips onto that in-app editing, um, that, sorry, outside of the app editing um, app, and, and then start trimming each of those clips, start adjusting the speed. Um, if there is a, if there's music that you already know, like I know that there's trending audio and people will kind of do like mini vlogs um, with, with the trending audio. So what I do is I screen record that audio. So I will be scrolling through Instagram and I'm like, I like that audio. I click on the audio. I see that it's trending. Um, so for those of you who don't know, there's a little arrow, like a diagonal arrow. That means it's trending on Instagram. And then it'll tell you how many videos have been uploaded using that that audio. I like using trending audio that is below 10,000 um, 10, videos because it means it's not being like overly used yet. You you could do it beyond that. It's just my preference is to, to kind of catch it when it's earlier. Um, I, that's not a strict rule. I'm just saying that that's, that's what kind of works for me. And I, I've used trending audio beyond that. But um, so I'll screen record that audio and then I'm able to import that into InShot or CapCut as audio. So you extract music as, or you extract, you could extract the music from a video. So that screen recording, you're just, you're just capturing that, um, the actual audio, and then you could sync it. So CapCut, I know has the feature where you could just click and it'll automatically tell you where like the beats are. I manually do it in InShot. It's just something that I'm used to and um, is kind of easy for, for me. Um, if, if, if you want to have um, CapCut automatically do it, do it in CapCut. I, I've seen videos of people do it. It looks really easy. I'm just not a, 
I'm not very savvy with cap cuts, so I don't, I don't mess with it too much, but you can do it like that. Um, I hope that answers the question more or less. Um, what if you want to cover something, but video didn't come out good or couldn't do it for some reason? Do you add photo with the voiceover? You can. So, um, for example, I think what works really well with with photo is I kind of like at least one video clip as like the opener to kind of hook people in. So um, not saying that you can't do it with strictly photo, but if you have like one video clip that kind of pulls people in and then, you know, maybe it's, I would use this more so for like a list type of type of video. So if it's, you know, five, five photo spots in Yosemite, you know, you're starting with that first either, you know, video or a photo, it's fine. Um, it doesn't matter too much. And then I would, you know, go to, um, yeah, it was just like one, two, three, four, five, photos, I would keep those photos a little bit shorter, like two seconds or less, kind of see what, what goes and then just have like that text overlay of like, what, you know, what is that? You, you don't have to have the text overlay. It could also be in the caption as well, but you can use, you can use photo. I would just keep it like kind of short and concise. Um, you could sync it with, with audio, you know, have it like change with the beat. Um, cause that kind of like, it's just visually interesting if, you know, people are looking at it, but I would try to keep those, um, video or the photo clips concise, like to, to like two seconds or less. How much time do you spend editing a reel? This is a great question, Nihon. Um, sometimes too long. Um, you don't have to do it very, um, it depends. It depends. I can, I could, I'm. I'm a perfectionist and I'm trying not to be. Um, I always say that. But I, I could easily spend like an hour plus on on a video. Um, but I've done I've done reels as, as short as like 20 or so minutes. Um, sometimes I get a little bit caught up with in the caption. I try to I try to be as quick as possible because obviously we want to, you know, put out as much as much content as we can and you know, what fits with our schedule. So we want to keep that in mind. Um, I found that for me, creating a caption first and kind of like having ideas on what those like headlines or topics are works really well. Sometimes before a trip, I'm like, okay, I think I want to capture something where I talk about like X top hikes, you know, X photo spots. I want to do something. I kind of already have like this idea and there's ones that you could kind of like you could constantly repeat, right? Like day with me in San Diego. Um, you could do that anywhere, right? Day with me in Barcelona, so on, so on. Um, what I spent in a day in um, X day road trip itinerary, you know, X day I um, Greece Island hopping itinerary, you know, these are things that you could like, just like on repeat or, or topics and headlines that you could do on repeat. Um, how about hashtags? Do you use a lot? Not many less competitive ones. Great question. Um, I have turned my focus more towards keywords. So I do still use hashtags. I probably use about like four or five to less than 10 hashtags. Um, they're very specific. Sometimes I'll throw in, you know, one that isn't like too, too niche, but, um, if you, if you go into my Instagram and look at like maybe my, my last few posts, you, you'll see that like, you know, it, it, I use hashtags very like location driven. So it could be Las Vegas, Nevada, visit Las Vegas. Um, Nevada outdoors. I'm trying to think of anything else that would be a little bit less niche, but um, I try to keep it like very like exact to what the video is. I don't really use like um, women who travel or like things that are more broad like that. Um, not that those 
don't work. I, I don't know, but um, I, I use ones that are a little bit more niche. But with keywords, um, I want to think about like what would people type in to search for? So I'll have like kind of like think of um, for those of you who blog, like think of like um, what is it? Long tail keywords. You could think of it like that. And then also think of a little bit more concise. So I do keywords that could work for like a blog could work for like something like Pinterest. So I just like load up my not load up. I probably use at least like 10, 10 keywords or so on each post. Um, but yeah, just kind of think of like, what would people kind of like search in Instagram, um, or even like, you know, in Pinterest, and I, I go back to blogging too, what would they search to like, find, find this, um, find this type of video? Um, all right, so tips, not, okay, we're going to continue on tips for editing your reels. So um, you could add voiceover and text overlay. Um, Test it out if you haven't done a voiceover. Um, I, I find that even though maybe it, my voiceovers don't get as many views anymore, it's something that my current audience is used to and likes. Um, it also, to me, it adds personality. It adds, it puts a voice to, you know, the little face that they see running around in those videos. Um, it just, it, to me, I'm like, I feel a little bit more relatable. And and maybe this doesn't work for, for everyone or you don't want to be too like forward facing and that's fine. You don't have to do voiceovers, but I highly encourage it. I just feel like it's, it's a very relatable thing, um, especially if you are more of like a forward facing um, brand, um, personal brand. Um, test out voiceovers. I've, I've gotten so much great feedback from my voiceovers. And even though I, you know, again, the trending audio is so much easier and gets more views, but I want to nurture my, my current audience. They've, they've been following me for a long time. They like the voiceover. So I, I work it in when I can. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe those, those voiceovers will end up working for you test it out. I, I highly encourage it. I know for some people, they're like, oh, it's out of my comfort zone. I don't like the way I sound. I don't like the way I sound either. But uh, here I am talking with you. Um, <laughs> so let me, okay, this question, I feel like I want to write a blog post before I do a reel about a destination. Can you comment on this? Of course, I don't always do this. But I, I, okay. Um, I am with you, Penny. I like I feel that I do, I do want to like, my goal is to have that blog post first because I want to draw people to that blog post. Once I put out those reels, that's, that's my goal. Um, it doesn't always work that way because blog posts take <laughs> a lot more time than putting together, you know, a, a series of, you know, three to 10 reels or well ish. Um, you know, it, you could create, three to five reels in less time than, than a blog post. But I think it is a great strategy because you could, again, adding those CTAs, letting people know, hey, I have this blog post, come check it out, link in bio, and you're able to draw people in. Um, I think if that strategy works, go with it. If, if you're in, say for example, um, you're doing more seasonal content where you know that blog post won't be out um, before. How do I explain this? Um, I think it just gets a little tricky with like seasonal content. Sometimes you know you go to a destination or you you're you're writing about you know Christmas travel or or something like that. You might not be able to get that blog post pushed out before you could easily create a reel. Um, so it just kind of depends. Um, I think it's a great strategy to to do the blog post before, um, especially if the blog is is you know your your main um, your your main avenue. So I I think if if you can work in that strategy, do it. 
Um, okay. Do we have any other questions? I hope I answered everything. Um, I'm going just looking at my notes. Okay. Um, what platform company do you use for your blog? I, um, I'm on WordPress. Um, my hosting is with SiteGround or, oh my God, I'm going so, yes, SiteGround. <laughs> I had to like type it in. Um, yeah. And I've, I've, I've been on WordPress ever since I started my blog. Um, I, I did hosting with Bluehost at first and I, I really like SiteGround. And for anyone um, who is doing voiceovers or wanting to do voiceovers, you can just do it either on your phone or with, you know, like a, um, your headphones. I use a, a microphone. It's by Shure. Um, it, it was a little bit pricey. I want to say it was like closer to $100. But um, it plugs into my phone and it has, I bought the, well, I didn't buy it. My boyfriend bought it for me. The, the little fuzzy cover that like, I don't know. I just feel like the sound is, sound is a lot better. And, um, you know, if you're going to talk, you, you want the, the audio to sound good. Um, but you can do it on your phone. Make sure you're in a quiet space. No echoes. Um, Heather, how, okay. How do you create covers for reels? This is a great question. I, um, I think I skipped over that. So how I do it is I upload, um, I have either, you know, I, I import a photo that I've edited on my computer or that's already in my camera roll. And then I, um, I put that into like, if I'm creating a story and then I type out, I type out my headline. So you don't have to add any text to a Reels cover. I like doing it because when you click over to the Reels tab, someone could easily be like, oh, this is the one about Lake Tahoe that like came up earlier in the feed or, you know, you could just easily see it or I don't want to say easily see it because the text is a little bit smaller, but you you, you could see it and kind of figure out, um, you know, what that, what that Reel is about. Um, I used to do all of the text in, in the app, like just as a story. And then I would save the story and then I would just upload that, that cover when I finished the reel. Um, you could also create um, transparent, like PNG, um, whatchamacallit. I go into Canva and I, all of my reels have a let's explore and it'll be California. Let's explore Nevada, let's explore Iceland. Um, I started creating those in Canva and just making them, you know, transparent um, PNG files. And then I will just copy that as a sticker and paste them in. Um, does InShot or CapCut add captions? Uh, yes. CapCut, I believe, has like an auto caption feature. And I could be wrong, but I, because I, I don't use CapCut, um, like I hardly ever use CapCut, but I believe they do. Um, InShot, you could add in the the um, text overlay. I personally do all of my text overlay in another app, which I know like, I'm like jumping from app to app, but I really like the app called Vixer. It's a video editor, but the video editing sucks, but the fonts the, of the text overlay are really cute. I really like their, their text, um, their fonts in the text overlay. So I just use it for text overlay, Vixer. Um, voiceover, you're adding it after the video, right? Yes. So I, um, I do the voiceover in, in, in shot. Um, there is a voice, you know, you could add in your voice. Um, there's a feature on there. I add it in and that way I could easily have that video go onto Instagram. I could put it onto, um, Pinterest, TikTok, YouTube shorts, wherever. I don't have to redo that, that voiceover again. Is some negative feedback about an attraction or tour a bad idea for a travel content creator or is it okay as long as it's balanced? Um, this is a great question. I used to like hate getting like negative comments, um, but a comment is a comment. Engagement is engagement. Not everybody is going to agree with 
you know, the, what you're showing, whether it's an excursion or whatnot. Now, if it's something like riding elephants or something like that, where it, it comes into like an ethical thing, um, that's just for you to decide. Um, but not everything, and not everyone is going to like what you do. I've I've done plenty of experiences where people think, "Oh, that's overpriced. What you should tell people this." Like, and you're not going to please everyone. Um, your your content isn't for everyone. And at the end of the day, engagement is engagement, and not everyone's going to like what you're doing. But we will we will take the comment. Um, so I don't think it's a bad idea. I. I you know, we're all different. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you all. Um, thank you so much. I, I was a little nervous about my presentation and I hope I, you know, gave it to you all concise and just thank you so much. Um, I encourage you to DM me, follow me if there's any you know, questions that you have. Um, I wanted to create a cheat sheet for, you know, whoever was interested and kind of just like, you know, further with, with Instagram reels. So if you're interested in that, you can email me at hello at thewildexplorer.com. Um, just let me know that you want the cheat sheet. Uh, just put that in the subject and I'll, um, I'll get that over to you. All righty. Thank you, Janine. If anyone has any further questions, um, feel free to drop it in the chat uh, and see you in the member portal. Otherwise, um, thank you for joining us today. This was really lovely. And I, I definitely took some takeaways on reels. It's something that's super useful and valuable and really timely in, in the time right now for travel. So really appreciate it, Janine. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Bye now, everyone. <laughs>